Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you've not been here before, well, welcome to my channel. My name is Jamie Fenn, and in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to do this sweet 3D glitch effect in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, and this is gonna really take your videos to the next level. I'm gonna cover a few things I haven't in previous tutorials, such as using the image plane in 3D space and using one of my favorite tools, the camera tracker. So with that said, let's make some cool glitch effects. All right, so here I have a clip. This is where we're gonna do the effect. And the first thing we wanna do is pick a point in the clip that you want to have this effect happen. So what I wanna do is just come in a few frames and let's start right about there. I'm gonna hold down option and drag this clip up and then come up to the clip and add freeze frame. And then you wanna drag the beginning of that freeze frame to the playhead. So I'm gonna drag this up, disable it and pick another point right about there. I'm gonna do the same thing, duplicate that, create a freeze frame, and then drag it to where the playhead is. So make sure these are both activated. I'm just pushing D on my keyboard to activate them and deactivate them. And then the next thing you wanna do is highlight all three clips, right click and select new fusion clip. Let's go into fusion. So by default, this is how it's set up. I'm just gonna get rid of these merge nodes because we will not need them. And this median one should be our video clip, which it is, make sure it's set up like this. So the first thing we wanna do in Fusion is add a camera tracker. So let's click on median one, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in camera tracker. Select the camera tracker. So once you've added the camera tracker, come up to the inspector and there's some options here that you can select. What I like to do is turn on preview auto track locations and turn down the minimum feature selection It'll create more points and maybe even turn up the detection threshold just the tiny amount. Maybe turn this down a little bit more. Default usually works pretty well. You don't really have to mess with it just for the specific clip, that's what I'm doing. The next thing I like to select is bi-directional tracking that will track backwards and forwards to get a more accurate track. And then what you wanna do is select auto track. And as you can see, the camera tracker is tracking all those little blue points and it's gonna generate a 3D environment based off of these 3D points. Great, okay, so once it's done tracking, you wanna hop over to the third little option here, this icon. And what we wanna do is basically kinda of narrow down the track and pick our best points and get rid of the ones that we don't want. So in order to do that, what I like to do is just come to the maximum track error and turn this down just a tiny amount. You can see down here, we have a total of 877 tracks, so we don't wanna get rid of too many. And then what I wanna do is just click delete. And then let's click solve and see how this works. Okay, we have an average solve error of 0.6945. I typically like to try to get below one. So this is a really good number. The lower you go, the more accurate your track will look. For this example, that should be fine. So once you've done that, let's hop over to the next icon and select the 3D scene transform. We want to come down to this option here that says aligned and select unaligned. And now what I'm gonna do is highlight some points on the back of his shirt. So when we import our still frames, this is where they will be attached to when we start working in our 3D space. Then I'm gonna come under here and set from selection. And you can see that that says origin. So that's just the origin of when we start putting things into our scene. That's where they will start when we go into our 3D environment. Select align and then come up here and let's click export. What that does is creates a nice tree for us. We can get rid of the camera tracker node here and disconnect this median input and connect the camera tracker render to the output. And we can get rid of the point cloud and the ground plane if we want to as well. So the next thing we wanna do is figure out our next clip that we want to put in. I don't know which one it is. I don't know if it's median one or median two, but we're gonna to try to figure out the first frame that comes into play that we want these effects to start happening on. So what we need to do now is add this still frame into our 3D environment. And in order to do that, we have to use something called an image plane. So if you come over here to this icon right here, select it and then drag it and connect it to the merge 3D. And so now when I play it back, you can see this is the clip that starts later in the shot. So what we wanna do is just disconnect that one and put our first one here like that. And now we have to go back to the point of where our still frame comes in. So I'm just using my arrow keys and right there is when it comes in. So we have to do a little bit of resizing now. So click on the image plane and come up to our second icon. This is in the inspector. There's a second icon here and we would just wanna turn down the opacity a little bit so we can see through it. 
And then we want to click on this arrows and bring up the scale. And we want to somewhat match this up to the frame that's underneath it. So in order to do that, you just have to make it larger. You can type in a number if you need to and then mess with the translation. So we can move this over like this. And if you actually click on the number and move it back and forth, you're a little bit more precise than using those uh, those wheels, I guess you would call them. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm holding down Command and using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And I'm just going to kind of move this down and see how well I can fit this to match. The next thing we want to do also is turn up the Z axis. So that way it kind of creates a 3D look. So when you turn this up, it will actually make the size get larger. So we'll have to turn this down in size to somewhat match this back up to fit the frame underneath. So as you turn up the Z axis, I'm only going, you know, 1.02. So it's not that much. But then I come back to the size and just resize it so it roughly matches up. And again, I'm messing with the translation so it fits the frame underneath. All right, so that's, you know, pretty well set up. And the next thing we want to do now is actually click on our median, our still frame, and add a uh, either a polygon tool, or for this example, I'm just going to click on rectangle and put something like this here. And then what you can do is move this over like that. I'll make it a little bit bigger so it looks a little bit more different. And now when we play this back, I'm going to drag this and put it on our final render. You can see now we're starting to get that glitch effect. The one thing is you have to make sure you click on your image plane and come back to your opacity and crank that up so it's not see-through. Or if you want the see-through effect, leave the opacity like that. So that's just one little bar. If you want to continue to add more patterns and stuff, what I like to typically do is come to the very beginning of that still frame when it comes into play and just add another rectangle or polygon node on top of what we've been doing on this still frame. And these are just random shapes. I mean, I could, you know, I could make it like that. And then when it comes time to uh, be glitchy, that's what happens. Okay, so that's dealing with the first still frame. Now here's how you do the second still frame. You basically do the same thing. You come to the point where you see it come into play and then you repeat the same process. So again, I added an image plane and then I'm just going to connect it to the merge node. So now when it comes in right there, I'm just using the arrow keys once again. Okay, come to the very beginning and repeat the process of what we did with the first still frame. So I'm going to click on the image plane, turn up the size. And the most important thing is, is that you need to make sure you turn up the Z axis on your translation, because if you don't do that, it won't really create a 3D effect. Now I'm gonna quickly redo what I did with the first still frame. Okay, so once you've done that, again, you can just add your own masking. Instead of doing a rectangle, this time I'm just going to use a polygon shape and just do something like, you know, maybe write like my initials and just do like a J or something. But keep in mind, if you use the polygon tool, this specific one, and then you draw the shape that you want, and then you move it when you go later in the clip, it will actually start to animate those keyframes. So be careful that if you don't want that to happen, don't mess with the keyframes, only do it on that one specific clip and then let it play out. So now we have something that looks a little something like this. So as you can see, there's actually a little bit of a jump on the J that I drew because it wasn't perfectly matched up. You see how it hops kind of like into frame. One way to actually get rid of that, because sometimes it is really tough to try to match up the frame underneath, you can come back into Fusion and under the image plane, you can just animate the opacity. So it kind of gradually comes in. It's not so jolting to the eye. So come to the point where it comes into frame and just go one frame behind. I'm using the arrow keys once again, click on the keyframe button, turn the opacity down and then go like three frames and turn it back up. So now it kind of has like this faded look to it and it almost kind of pops out at you, which is kind of cool. And you can mess around and add as many layers to each one of these still frames as much as you want. So just keep adding rectangles and then, you know, mess with the shapes and the sizes and put them wherever you want and you can make them small and large. Just kind of mess around with it. What helps too is if you don't overlap them, because if you overlap them, it kind of takes away from the 3D effect. So kind of adjust them accordingly so they don't, you know, get in the way of other glitch effects. And that's what will add some really cool depth to your shots. 
And if you want to add more layers, I only did two, but you could pick different points of where you want your still frames to be and just generate a bunch of different shapes and different sizes on all the different still frames. And that will add more depth to the shot. But for this example, I only did two. Hey, if you had fun with this tutorial, hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below and let me know what you think about this video. And if you're new to the channel, come say, hey, introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about what you like to do. And if not, well, I'll see you in my next video.